After years of planning and preparation, John was finally ready to commit the perfect crime. He had spent countless hours researching and studying, and he was confident that he had thought of every possible contingency. The target of John's crime was a wealthy businessman named Richard, who had made a fortune through questionable business dealings. John had no personal grudge against Richard, he simply saw him as an easy target. John's plan was simple but effective. He would break into Richard's mansion while he was away on vacation, steal a valuable piece of artwork from his collection, and then disappear without a trace. Everything went according to plan at first. John broke into the mansion undetected, found the artwork, and made his escape. But just as he was about to leave the property, he heard a noise behind him. It was Richard, who had returned home early from his vacation. John froze for a moment, but then he realized that he had the upper hand. He pointed a gun at Richard and demanded that he stay quiet and cooperate. But Richard surprised John by refusing to back down. He calmly explained that he knew all about John's plan and had been waiting for him to make his move. He had installed a sophisticated security system that had alerted him the moment John had entered the mansion. John was shocked and terrified. He had thought of everything except for the possibility that his target would be one step ahead of him. Richard called the police, and John was arrested and charged with burglary and attempted robbery. In the end, John realized that there was no such thing as a perfect crime. He had become so obsessed with the idea of pulling off the ultimate heist that he had overlooked the most basic element of all, the human factor. And while he had been caught and punished for his crime, he also learned a valuable lesson about the consequences of greed and the dangers of underestimating his opponents.